Pandemics are not just events in history books. They are powerful forces that reshape our world. They arrive unannounced, disrupting the familiar rhythms of daily life and leaving behind a trail of sorrow and change. The Great Spanish Flu of 1918 was one such force. It swept across a planet weary from war, leaving an indelible mark on a generation. A century later, the world stood still again. The COVID-19 pandemic, which began its relentless march in late 2019, reminded us that our modern, interconnected world is as vulnerable as ever. Both events, though separated by a hundred years of progress, spread with terrifying speed and fundamentally altered how people lived, worked connected with one another. The shared experience of these global health crises has left humanity with a profound and unsettling question. Are we due for another pandemic? The story of modern pandemics begins in 1918. The Great War was ending, but a new, invisible enemy was just beginning its assault. The Spanish flu, an H1N1 influenza virus, emerged with unprecedented virulence. Soldiers returning home on crowded ships and trains carried the virus with them, seeding outbreaks in every corner of the globe. Within months, it had infected an estimated one-third of the world's population. Cities from Boston to Bombay shut down public life. Theater schools and churches were closed. Gauze masks became a common, if ineffective, sight on the streets. Hospitals were overwhelmed, forcing communities to set up emergency wards in public buildings. For many, it felt like the end of the world. After the storm of 1918 passed, the world entered a period of relative calm, punctuated by smaller yet significant outbreaks. In 1957, the Asian flu, H2N2, emerged, followed by the Hong Kong flu, H3N2, in 1968. While these pandemics caused millions of deaths worldwide, they were less severe than the 1918 catastrophe. By this time, scientific understanding had advanced. Scientists could now isolate and identify influenza viruses. This led to the development of annual flu vaccines and the establishment of global surveillance networks to track new strains. The turn of the 21st century brought a series of new and alarming warnings. In 2002, a novel coronavirus emerged, causing an illness named Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, or SARS. It spread from China to more than two dozen countries, sparking global panic. The world watched as health officials implemented strict quarantine measures and contact tracing to contain the outbreak. Though SARS was ultimately stopped, infecting around 8,000 people, it was a stark reminder of how quickly a new disease could travel in our hyper-connected world. It was followed by scares from H5N1 bird flu and the emergence of Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, in 2012 another deadly coronavirus, reinforcing the threat posed by viruses that jump from animals to humans. This series of tremors culminated in the seismic shock of late 2019. Reports of a mysterious pneumonia in Wuhan, China, soon unmasked a new coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2. The resulting disease, COVID-19, spread with breathtaking efficiency. Unlike the original SARS, it could be transmitted by people with no symptoms, making it nearly impossible to contain. What followed was a global crisis on a scale not seen since 1918. Borders closed, economies shuttered, and daily life was transformed. The COVID-19 pandemic harnessed the very interconnectedness of the modern world to fuel its spread, demonstrating that despite a century of scientific advancement, humanity remained profoundly vulnerable to a novel pathogen. This historical arc shows a clear pattern. The threat is constant, and the warnings have become more frequent. Most new diseases that infect humans have a surprising origin. They begin in animals. The story of pandemics is a human story. It is a tale of loss, but it is also one of incredible resilience, ingenuity, and cooperation. It is about families like the Millers in Philadelphia in 1918, who lost a child to the flu and saw their neighborhood silenced by fear. 
It is also about the nurse in Milan in 2020, working tireless hours to save lives, fueled by a sense of duty to her community. These personal accounts are woven into the larger fabric of global events. They remind us that behind the statistics and scientific charts are real people whose lives are forever changed. This understanding is crucial as we look forward. As we stand here today, on November 11th, 2025, the memories of lockdowns, masks, and daily case counts are still fresh. The world has learned difficult lessons about the fragility of our health systems and the speed at which a new pathogen can circle the globe. The central question is no longer if another pandemic will occur, but when it will arrive and how prepared we will be to face it. The challenge is to transform the hard-won knowledge from past struggles into a robust defense for the future. By examining the history of these events, we can forge a path forward that is not paved with fear, but with foresight, readiness, and a quiet, determined hope for a safer world. Most new diseases that infect humans have a surprising origin. They begin in animals. Viruses, like all living things, seek to survive and replicate. They are constantly mutating and evolving. The vast majority of these viruses live harmlessly within their animal hosts. Bats, birds, rodents. However, every so often, a virus acquires a random mutation that gives it a new key. One that allows it to unlock the cells of a different species, including humans. This jump from an animal to a person is called a zoonotic spillover event. It is the spark that can ignite a pandemic. Historically, diseases like measles, influenza, HIV, all began as animal viruses. These spillovers are not entirely random. Human activities dramatically increase their likelihood. One of the biggest drivers is the destruction of natural habitats. As we cut down forests for agriculture mining urban expansion, we push deeper into wild spaces. This brings people and their domestic animals into closer and more frequent contact with wild animals and the unique viruses they carry. A farmer living at the edge of a newly cleared forest, a worker in a mine deep in a jungle, might be the first to encounter a new pathogen. The intricate balance of nature is disturbed, creating new and unpredictable pathways for viruses to cross the species barrier. Another critical factor is the way we raise and trade animals. Chickens, pigs. Such environments are perfect incubators for viruses. A single flu virus can spread rapidly through a flock of birds, mutating as it goes. Live animal markets, where various species are kept in close quarters before being sold for food, also create a high-risk interface. When the Spanish flu struck in 1918, public health as we know it was in its infancy. Faced with a mysterious and deadly foe, officials relied on a limited set of tools, many of which dated back centuries. Their primary weapons were social behavioral. Cities and towns across the world implemented quarantines isolating the sick in their homes. They closed public gathering places like schools, churches, saloons to reduce transmission. Many municipalities mandated the wearing of cloth masks, leading to public debates and compliance challenges that feel strikingly familiar today. In 2020, the world faced COVID-19 with a much more sophisticated arsenal, yet the foundational strategies looked remarkably similar to those used in 1918. Once again, Governments implemented lockdowns, stay-at-home orders to flatten the curve and prevent healthcare systems from being overwhelmed. Mask mandates became a global phenomenon. The core principle of non-pharmaceutical interventions, reducing contact between people to slow viral spread, remained as critical in the 21st century as it was in the 20th. However, the response to COVID-19 was also enhanced by technologies unimaginable a century ago. Within weeks, scientists isolated the virus, sequenced its code, built diagnostics, and accelerated vaccines using mRNA and viral vectors. Hospitals leveraged ventilatory support and evolving treatments while global clinician networks refined care in real time. A future pandemic will not appear out of thin air. It will begin with quiet signals, small tremors that can be detected if we are listening carefully. 
One of the most important warning signs is the emergence of unusual clusters of illness in people. Imagine a doctor in a rural clinic noticing several patients have come in with a severe respiratory illness that doesn't match any known disease. This is a red flag. When local health officials see a spike in patients with similar unexplained symptoms, it triggers an investigation. This initial detection at the local level is the first, and perhaps most critical, link in the chain of global pandemic defense. Another key set of warnings comes from the animal world. Since most new human diseases originate in animals, systematic surveillance of animal populations is essential. They also watch for unusual die-offs, strange illnesses in livestock and other domestic animals. A report of a novel flu strain sweeping through a poultry farm, a mysterious virus afflicting pigs can be an early indicator of a pathogen that might have the potential to jump to humans. Modern sequencing rapidly identifies novel pathogens. Global databases compare genomes and ring alarms, kick-starting tests, treatments, and vaccines. The same outbreak in a city with an international airport is a crisis. Modeling travel and population movement gauges spread risk. When sustained person-to-person -person spread appears in multiple unconnected places, the whispers have become a roar. So, when will the next pandemic strike? No one can circle a date on the calendar. It could be next year, or it could be decades from now. What history and science tell us with certainty is that it will happen. The forces that drive pandemics are accelerating. Human populations expanding into wild habitats. Global travel connecting us more than ever. Climate change altering ecosystems and bringing viruses into contact with new hosts. The risk is growing. The question is not timing, but constant readiness. For individuals and communities, preparation begins with small, practical actions. Embrace the lessons from COVID-19 as permanent habits. Practice good hygiene. Frequent hand washing. Make a habit of staying home when sick to protect others. Trust and use proven public health tools. Get vaccinated against seasonal flu and other common diseases. That helps reduce the burden on healthcare systems. Build stronger, more resilient, and more equitable health systems. Foster international cooperation. Recognize that the health of one is linked to the health of all. Face the future not with fear, but with confidence. We can be ready. We can be ready.